We've set up now the data for our first classification problem, and now it's time to actually go and do the code for that. So we're going to make use of uh, a built-in mechanism into uh, scikit-learn called Stochastic Gradient Descent Classifier, or SGD Classifier. Uh, this provides uh, a variety of different linear-based classifiers within the class, and depending upon how you set up things, uh, you'll end up with a different classification algorithm. Uh, one of the choices that we get to make when we uh, make use of this particular classifier type is we can define what the loss metric should be, as in what, how, what do we mean by uh, error here. For our very first uh, attempt, we're going to select uh, loss as log, the, the string log, and what this does is it turns on logistic regression, just as we've uh, been talking about already. So I'm still within the environment where we've been uh, pulling out the data, pre-processing it. Uh, so uh, all of the variables are still defined. I'm going to be very specific here about what our inputs and outputs are. Uh, for the moment, I'm going to uh, select our input variables to be the matrix that we created from the position and velocity variables. And we can do a variety of different types of classification problems. In this case, I'm going to select my output labels as uh, label motion. And if you recall, actually from the figure here that's still uh, being shown, uh, we plotted label motion here for the first 50 seconds of our data set. So here the classes are, is the robot providing uh, assistance or is it not providing assistance? And let's go ahead and set up the classifier. So it's SGD classifier. And we've already imported this package up at the very top of the file. Uh, it's in the skeleton that I gave you. And SGD classifier provides a whole variety of different uh, options that you can uh, hand in at time of creation. Oops, this is going to be random state. And the random state parameter um, because the SGD classifier, there's a certain amount of randomness that gets injected into the learning process. In particular, we're, we're going to select an initial set of parameters that are random. Uh, there are times where we want uh, to be able to reproduce our results uh, exactly. And so this random state here is going to seed our random number generator. So if we execute this once and then execute it again, the results should be the same as, as long as we're handing the same data to the classifier. When to set max iter to uh, to ten thousand, if you recall, this stochastic gradient descent algorithm takes a, a sequence of steps. It assesses what the current gradient is, takes a small step in the downhill direction, and then reassesses from there. And uh, this max iter parameter tells us uh, how many of those steps we're allowed to take at most. I'm also going to set a, another uh, criteria, which is uh, tolerance. This is, the, uh, this is the amount of error uh, at which point we consider the, uh, the model to have uh, learned to solve this problem. And uh, here we're, we're choosing uh, 10 to the minus 3. And then finally, we're going to also specify our, uh, our loss function. We'll create the classifier and then we'll fit it. Oops, ins and outs. So the fit function uh, for any of our models uh, takes as input the inputs and the corresponding outputs. The SGD classifier is expecting uh, classes here in, in the outputs. So let's execute that. And you'll notice it's also printing out a whole variety of other uh, parameters. Uh, most of those are default. A few are actually taken from the, uh, the, from the constructor uh, setup. Okay, so now that, now that we've learned the parameters for this classifier, uh, what I'm going to do is pull out two kinds of information here. So if you recall, uh, 
we had this notion of a score when we were defining our, our linear function. We defined this function f, which, which is our linear function. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask our classifier what it would assign as a score, what, what f assigns as a score, uh, based on the, uh, the same inputs that we use to train the model. And the method there is, is decision function. So that's, in, in this case, this is a, a line. And, and it, we hand it the inputs and we get out the, the scores. And then the other thing I'm going to do is pull out the predict, predictions. Oops, predict ins. Um, the distinction here is that the scores are the Fs. Um, the prediction is going to be the class output that this uh, model will produce. So in our case, uh, where we have just two classes, zero and one, it's going to uh, spit out either zero or one, depending upon which one it thinks is really higher probability. Okay, there we go. And that is done. And finally, let's visualize what the outputs look like. And we're going to plot several different things here. We'll plot the, the outs, which are the true labels. That's plt.plot. We're also going to plot the labels that are actually assigned. And we're going to plot the raw scores. And got an S there. All right, that should do it. Oops. And it is out, not out. There we go. Uh, oh, let me uh, shift scores down some so it's not overlapping. There we go. Okay, so. So red, red is true labels, and uh, blue is predicted labels. Let me add, uh, we're looking over the full 300 seconds of data that we have. Let's look at the, uh, the first 100 seconds here. And it'll give us a little bit better perspective here. So uh, what you'll notice is that we have a fairly regular uh, uh, set of assistance events here. And the, so this is the true label in red. The predicted label here is in blue. And if, if blue were, if the model were doing uh, things perfectly, it would match what we have uh, in red. And, and you'll see that there are occasionally times where, uh, where we have blue going up during uh, red up. Actually, that's a nice match there. Um, this does not look like it's so well aligned. Uh, and uh, there are definitely some blues going high when, when red is low here. So we're, we're not, not doing all that well here. Um, the relationship between green and blue, uh, keep in mind that I, did shift, uh, that I did shift the green curve down, but essentially every time that green uh, achieves a threshold, which is uh, right around negative five, uh, the blue goes high. So. Uh, so that sits right along, uh, right along here. So there's there are the two highs there that we see up in the blue, and uh, another high here, and then it's uh, the next high point is, is here and, and here. And you can see that we've got real a real width here to our, our label, and the the uh, the green curve is high for a sustained period of time there. So. This is not such a great uh, uh, set of predictions here, um, but we'll we'll work on that. I do want to do one other thing. There's a function that we're importing called confusion matrix, and it takes us it, it takes two inputs. It takes the true labels and the predicted labels, 
and it's going to give us back, oh, let's also look at the value of that variable. It gives us a, uh, a, uh, a matrix. Um, this column corresponds to the model predicting true. And this column corresponds to the model predicting uh, false or in, in the positive class or, or the negative class. The, the rows correspond to the true label being false is that first row. And uh, this uh, row here corresponds to the, the true label uh, being true. So an ideal confusion matrix. So, so what we've done here is we've counted the number of times that we've, the, the cell here corresponds to when the, uh, the model says true and the answer really is true. Those are our true positives. We'll talk about that in a, in a moment. This uh, cell here corresponds to the model saying false and the true label being false. And, and then finally, this cell here corresponds to the model saying true, but the true label being false. If we had a perfect predictor, then all of our counts would either be here or here. So they'd be on this diagonal here and we'd have zeros in the off diagonal elements. That's clearly not the, the, the case here. But staring very quickly at this confusion matrix, uh, one of the things to note is that uh, over this 300 second period of time, our model is actually not doing all that well at distinguishing the positives from the negatives. So that's going to be uh, the next topic that we're going to work on here.